As the Battle of Savo Island heavily damaged American heavy cruisers near Guadalcanal, the aircraft carriers would still hold most of the Japanese surface force back as they could get destroyed by dive bombers and torpedo bombers. The loss of Mikuma proved that surface units unprotected are easy targets for enemy aircraft. And shortly after Savo Island, the Cactus airfield became operational and would defend the area if the carriers wouldn't be available. So the Japanese won another carrier battle to finally destroy the most powerful American units in the Battle of Eastern Solomons, the Japanese naming this operation Ka. The Japanese primary objective was to destroy the three American carriers, these being Enterprise, Saratoga and Wasp, however Wasp would retreat to refuel just before the battle. So the Japanese forces split up into multiple groups, these being the main carrier group consisting of their best ships, the Shokaku and Zuikaku with escorts under the command of Chuichi Nagumo, a smaller carrier fleet with Ryujo as the flagship under command of Chuichi Hara, a small force with seaplane tender Chitose, two heavy surface groups, one is a vanguard force consisting of two Congo-class battleships, three heavy cruisers, one light cruiser and eight destroyers under the command of Rear Admiral Hiraoki Abe, and the other consisting of five heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, a battleship and six destroyers under the command of Nabutake Kondo, and a transport fleet that would deliver fresh troops on Guadalcanal to secure the airfield for them. Eighth Fleet, the one that took part in the Battle of Savo Island, appeared as a close cover force under the command of Vice Admiral Gunichi Mikawa. And to top it all off, around 100 land-based aircraft from Rebol would also be available to provide air cover and strikes. The heavy surface ships would bombard American positions in Guadalcanal and also be able to attack damaged American ships in the area. On the US side, two fleets would be in the area with carriers as flagships. One had the Enterprise as well as the battleship South Dakota, and the other had the battle cruiser commuter to carrier Saratoga. A third force would consist of WASP, two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser and seven destroyers, but as mentioned before, this unit would not participate in the fight. Even though the South Dakota was a superior battleship compared to a Congo or a Nagato class, facing more of these ships would surely result in the loss of the American ship. And so the third carrier battle was set, the second fight between Nagumo and Fletcher. A couple of days before the actual battle, both sides deployed multiple scouts to find potential enemy ships. One Japanese recon aircraft was shot down and that indicated to Nagumo that there is a carrier in the area, while the Americans knew that some Japanese warships were in the region scouting ahead. Fletcher didn't receive intelligence or scouting reports on Japanese carriers in the area and he sent off WASP's task force away to refuel. On the 23rd at 9.50, a Carolina spotted the Japanese invasion force but these ships retreated after spotting the flying boat and two strikes from Saratoga never found their target. On the 24th of August, Ryujo moved forward to strike Henderson Field. This would damage American aircraft on Cactus Airfield and would draw attention to this group so the two fleet carriers would be hidden and unopposed. The Ryujo sent out a small strike composed of six torpedo bombers armed with bombs and 15 zeros as escorts. These aircraft were supposed to be joined by aircraft from Rabaul, but they never appeared due to bad weather. Flying boats and scout aircraft were sent off to find the Japanese ships. They spotted all task forces with the exception of the main carrier group. Fletcher found the news suspicious as only one light carrier would be providing air support, but still he couldn't miss a chance to take out a carrier, even if it's a light carrier, so half a Saratoga strike aircraft launched from the ship headed towards the small Japanese ship at 1400 hours. The Japanese strike arrived over Henderson Field at 1423 and the strike group lost three fighters and three bomb armed torpedo bombers, but little damage was caused at the airfield. At about the same time, Fletcher's carriers were also spotted and Nagumo's carrier sent off a strike of 27 dive bombers and 15 fighters under the command of Lieutenant Commander Mamoru Seki. At 1600 hours, another wave of dive bombers and fighters were launched from the Shokakus. At 1550, the American strike spotted and attacked Ryujo. The small carrier successfully evaded 10 bombs, but then another formation pressed their attack and three bombs hit the carrier. A torpedo hit followed moments later. The Ryujo's damage control teams did a good job as they put out the fires. The fires are also only on the upper hangar deck which limited the spread, but the torpedo hit disabled all starboard machinery. Its small size also meant that the port side machinery got disabled not long after and the order to abandon ship was given. Seven B-17s found and attacked the carrier but these were unsuccessful. A few hours later, the Ryujo sank and all Japanese aircraft had to ditch near the escorting ships. The convoy had to turn west shortly after this attack, but the battle wasn't over. At just over 4 in the afternoon, American radar spotted the first strike and 53 Wildcats would provide combat air patrol. But due to communication problems, the Wildcats mostly fought the Zeros, although some attacked the D-3A dive bombers. The Japanese dive bombers approached from the north and split into two units to attack both carriers. 
In the end, most of the dive bombers attacked Enterprise, although some attacked South Dakota, but the battleship shot down all of its attackers. Enterprise wasn't as lucky, as the dive bombers pressed their attacks and despite fierce anti-aircraft fire from the Americans, the Vals hit the Enterprise with three bombs. The Enterprise was heavily damaged, but not in critical condition. The first bomb exploded amongst the provisions and storage areas, the second detonated inside the hangar and the third one partially exploded, blowing a 10-foot hole next to the amidships elevator. Luckily for the Americans, the second strike missed the Saratoga and Enterprise and these aircraft were returned afterwards. Just before the attack on Enterprise, Fletcher sent off some aircraft to counterattack the enemy and these aircraft found the seaplane tender Chitose at 1735, damaging it with two near misses. By 1900, the battle was over as Fletcher retreated southeast and Nagumo retreated to refuel instead of pressing his attack. It is strange that the Japanese main carrier force didn't use its torpedo bombers, as a strike of up to 54 attack aircraft and fighter escorts would be surely enough to sink at least Enterprise. Losses for the Japanese were the Ryujo, one destroyer, a transport ship, 75 aircraft and over 300 servicemen dead, while the Americans lost 20 aircraft and 90 servicemen. The Enterprise had to retreat for repairs as well as the seaplane tender Chitose and one Japanese light cruiser. This is a clear American victory, but this wasn't the end of the action. With midnight approaching, Tanaka and his transport sailed the Guadalcanal and three destroyers shelled American positions as a diversion. The following day, the convoy would be attacked by Marine and Navy aircraft and the Jinsu got damaged, the destroyer Mitsuki and the transport Kinryu Maru sank.